So, um, hello, my fellow comic book collectors. It's Alan, the Comic Collector Geek, and I'm joined with my friend Mark Olroyd, and we are the Price Variants. And um, we're going to do something a little different. I always say that. I always like to say that. We're going to do something a little different, but it's always different because it's always cool. Um, we are going to not look at Heritage Auctions this week. We're going to look at Comic Link. Comic Link. Because Comic Link had its winter special auction-y thingy, probably messed up the name of it, but uh, it's their big auction that they have in the winter. And um, I thought, hey, this is a pretty cool auction. There's some pretty cool books. Uh, a lot of books that Mark loves on this list. So, um, yeah, it will be a fun one. <laughs> I to say a lot of number ones and a lot of yeah. individual suspects. Yes. Right. And here we go. Uh, but some pretty big sales. So I, I mean, I'm so never even, I, I've had to join Comic Link in able to do this video, so um, which was free, so it wasn't too bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is how Comic Link looks as compared to our usual heritage. It's not quite as, as much fun. I presume I get... If you up click on it, 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 it's like a drop anchor. It goes down to the okay. actual... So, so this is 8-5 uh, of Avengers number one. So first Avengers. And, you know, very solid, eight, you know, very solid looking uh, Avengers. So uh, the price... For it was twenty four seven fifty. Twenty four seven fifty. Yeah. Um, which I don't know. I think that's a little bit down. That seems a little uh more affordable than um I remember them going for. So um, but it's uh you know, it's a still a strong sale. Well, I mean, look at that copy. That is a cracker. Yeah, I mean it's really I like, you know, we'd have to probably zoom in and see, right? But uh, it looks very solid. Um, one thing that I, okay, just scroll down for one sec. This is my one complaint with Comic Link. That. Go up. That, right there. They always put their sticker on the back of the slabs. Okay. What do they it, do it, it, it's just so that it's always on the slab. So, yeah, it's you know, it's their, it's their branding, right? Right. So I, it drives me nuts because I get these slabs with comic links stuck to them. And, it, you know, it, it's stuck. It's like, yeah, it's 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 a bit of a pet peeve. It has nothing to do with this video, but it is my pet peeve that the comic link puts a sticker on the back of the slab. If you're watching, stop it. And stop it. People stop it. Stickers on front covers of comics. Stop doing it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't mind it if it was on the bag. But it's actually on the slab. Yeah, no, it's annoying. I don't want. Yeah, it's really annoying. My bag. I've never bought from Comic Link. There we go. Right. So, what do we reckon, Alan? Eight five. You think this is a bit down for twenty? Yeah, I'd say about half, actually. Oh, it is down. Uh, this is significantly down, Alan. Um, what was the last big sale there? So the, uh, oh, it's about the same. So the last sale was in September twenty twenty two. So. Okay. Um, at twenty seven seven hundred, so this is four thousand down. Uh, three thousand, three thousand down from that. Yeah, so it's down a bit. And then what? What's the peak? The peak was peak COVID was thirty six thousand. Okay, so not half at least. Um, you know, still down about twelve thousand. But um, if you look at the cur uh, at the the trend line, it's still going down though. That's the problem. It hasn't stopped. Yeah, um, I, it's really hard to say because there, this is kind of one of those weird trend lines um, because, it, you know, you can see like from probably around 2015 era, yeah. uh, right around there, you know, that it had this kind of huge um, climb. Well, we've got and all then, stuff going on, haven't we? We've got end game yeah. stuff going on here. Yeah, and that's really made this book on the map. I mean, it was a very flat book before that you know it wasn't like a super key that people wanted until avengers became a thing yeah um so yeah um this is uh you know i think it's within that trend line sort of i would say mm. maybe a little well, bit down from it COVID sale at 23 500 so it's barely up from that yeah i mean yeah 
I, I say it's still, I say it's probably at the bottom right now with this sale. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, but I'd say it's on that trend line overall. Okay. Would be my guess, my, my, my squinting at the You're camera squinting. guess. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Very generous. Okay. Let's <laughs> one. Fantastic 448. Mm. In a 96. Yeah. And very nice copy. Of this book. High grade stuff here, Alan, aren't we? These are all going to be high grade, aren't they? Uh, yeah, it's a big sale, right? So, um, Alan, they've listened to your criticism and they have not stuck a comic link sticker on the back of this one. That's how quick they listen. That's you know good on them. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this is really a really nice copy. Um, first appearance of Galactus and the Silver Surfer. I, I'm not going to go with what uh, CGC says, where it's a cameo of Galactus. It's actually, you know, Galactus is on three full pages. Sorry, how can that be a cameo? Yeah, it's like a full two-page spread of Galactus. He's got the cover and he's inside for about three or four pages. That's getting ridiculous. I mean, how do you not have a cameo? Do you, if, you know, somebody got to be on every panel on every page. Yeah, so I'm going to say it's the first Silver Surfer, first Galactus. <laughs> So, um, yeah, this is a really cool book. Um, yeah, um, and this sold for 24000 or 25000 25000 25, for a 9.6, um, which is, sounds okay to me. Uh, it sounds low to me. I would have thought around 40. Yeah. Uh, well, it's around where it's been selling recently. So the okay. last sale was twenty five two hundred. Um, so it's actually up from that previous sale. So it's up a hundred dollars. Oh well, I mean it's still <laughs> something. It's up, yay! Record. No, um, <laughs> it's it's no, not, but I mean it's up it from the previous fall of any more. Yeah, I mean if you look at that curve, I mean this has a crazy curve on it where it it had a massive spike. I mean, what was that spike? Well, that was a crazy one-off, wasn't it? Fifty-six thousand in peak COVID. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It's about it's more than half. Like I would have thought, around forty thousand would be kind of a more in line yeah, with. Go back to pre-COVID. Is that pre-COVID? Yeah, just about here's pre-COVID. It was selling for eighteen, so you know. Oh, it's okay. Not... So it's still well, well no, up. It's still uh, well up. It's well up on pre-COVID. Okay, that's a good sign. Um, and the thing is. Is it this one or is it 49? Um, what's the census count on this one? Oh, this one's the big one. This has got a lot more than 40. Uh, this is 48. Yeah. yeah it's 49 that's lower. This has got a huge number. I think you said there was a warehouse find or something. A warehouse find of this one in high grades. So. Yeah. So this half, this is double the number of 49s. Yeah. So about 9,000, which is a really high census count for this book. <laughs> Um, so I mean that's one of the things that kind of hurt it in a way too because it's it's not as rare as it you know could have been. <laughs> yeah, um, it, as, you, as you always say, you know when there's a lot of them, they suffer more when there's some when there's some trauma because there's a lot of them to come onto the market, push the price down. When you've got yeah. books, that can't happen because there isn't that many of them. Hmm. But I mean, I mean, there are rumors like I mean, some of the things it's like, you know, demand is a, probably a little bit up right now because of um, rumors about the Fantastic Four movie. Yeah, that's and, why I think this is still holding quite, quite steadily yeah. above uh, pre-COVID numbers. Yeah, but a, a book I really like. I was super excited when I got my copy of that book. Um, I didn't get a 9.6, though. Um, so, okay. <laughs> Me either. Right. Uh, so Daredevil one. Yeah, another great book. Um, and this is you know reasonable, reasonable great. Oh, I haven't even got a picture of the back of this one, Alan. The, is this one got a CGC sticker there, which is fine. Yeah, that's the old slabs, yeah. the old style where they they do that kind of sticker. So yeah. Okay. Uh, so this went for twenty seven thousand. We'll go for those similar prices. They have twenty seven thousand. Yeah, these early ones are all kind of the same price. So I took what I did is I looked at the top ten sales. 
So these are like the lower on the list, but uh, they were all in that 25 to 27,000 range. Okay, um, so 9.2, 27,000. Uh, first, first Daredevil, you know, Daredevil number one, so. Um, 27, oh dear. Right, this is back down here. So you see how it came, that's the COVID peak. Then we came down. Uh, really? A dramatic downshift. Dramatic, dramatic then, down. then the last sale was up a bit, but I'm afraid this one is actually lower it's than it's, it's actually down here. So the last sale was around 31,000? 34. So this went 34. Seven. So this is seven grand less than that one. Wow. So that's that's quite uh, that's a quite significant drop. I think, um, I think that one is the outlier. I think we're still on this downward trend here. Yeah, it's probably going to level out at like twenty six or twenty seven thousand somewhere around. You know, because if you look at it, I mean, it's well above the trend. Oh yeah, we're still yeah. way above pre COVID. Um, but, but this is one of those books that was always underrated yeah. and undervalued. So yeah, yeah. I mean, pre COVID was 14. So, you know, 27s are still a, you know, nearly double pre COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think I'm so, I, I bought, I bought my Daredevil one before COVID. <laughs> I think this is going to drop more, Alan. My, you, you're saying you think the, this is going to settle out 26, 27. I think this is going to settle out 21, 22. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, yeah. You might be right because COVID, this was 14. So, you know, if I carry on a sort of line, um, I think it's more good. We'll, we'll see. We'll see who's right. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the things that I'm sort of, the reason I kind of say that 26 to 27 range is we still have the Daredevil show if they do it right. I've heard bad things about it, but uh, lots of rewrites, lots of like, you know, panicking. Um, but if they do it right, you know, this book will kind of go back up again uh marvel right now is not really doing things right so <laughs> we'll find out though we'll find out so right okay uh um, hey, what's the census count i always like the census counts is that here this is quite i think it was quite high yeah like six thousand yeah, yeah. Very so pretty high sense is kind of i mean this was later you know people were saving their number ones at that time yeah yeah. Okay. Okay. Now we've got an Iron Man number one. But this is a special um, one. Hang on. Pardon? This is a doubly special uh, yeah, Iron so Man number Iron one. Min, Min, Rocky Mountain pedigree, highest graded, one of four. Uh, was it signed by? Signed by Stan, probably. Yeah. Signed by Stan Lee. Yeah. Um, so there's not much more you could have going for this. And he signed it in a nice place as well. He signed it right in the middle of your premiere. <laughs> Marvel premiere thing. So, I mean, this is the highest graded copy on the census. Signed, a signed copy. So, I mean, this is the best, of, the best that you can do for Iron Man number one. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to so, do better than that. So, 20, this sounds, 28 doesn't sound... Doesn't sound that well, high, <laughs> given that so uh, given all that we've said about it. Let's have a look. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm afraid this has lost half its value. So the last okay, what was a copy of this in a nine point eight sold for fifty thousand dollars, and that this just sold for twenty eight. So it's lost a huge amount of money, and that was pre COVID. That's not a COVID month. That's not a COVID. Oh wow! So this is just a. Really weak sale, <laughs> really weak sale. Somebody got a steal on this one. Um, well, which is the the paid a bad price on this, and the previous person paid far too much. Um, you know, who knows? You don't know until there's another one, do you? Yeah, um, what I always like to do is like I always sort of estimate the value of Stanley's signature to be around $500. So, what I do is I look at the blue label 94, which would sell a little bit more frequently. Than a than a like a gold label and see how that is faring. Uh, okay, let's have a look at the um... and then add five hundred to the price. Yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of I think so. very ballparking way of doing as it as the comic goes up in value though. Um, so Universal nine point eight. 
There were 8,000 of these on the census, by the way. That's just pretty crazy census, but okay. And uh, so um, there well, are some high graded copies. For this. Minus 500. Uh, so the, what? The, un, the unsigned one, the last one went for 28,800. So Stan's signature has devalued this by 1,000. <laughs> I think somebody's got to steal on it. I, I, I really do at this point. You know, it's doesn't make sense that it would go for less than the unsigned copy. Yeah, that's not um, an unsigned copy and you'd sold a month ago. So that's a pretty recent price. So I think yeah. somebody's got a bargain, haven't they? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, as I said, it should be probably around that 30,000 mark even. Um, yeah, this was <laughs> a, bit of a bit of a steal. Um, yeah, uh, wow. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, the fact that Iron Man is dead in the, in the, in the movies kind of hurts, but I, I heard there was rumors that he, he was coming back. Well, he's bound to at some stage, it's just quite the, whether it's in our lifetime and whether he's, yeah. back, is, whether it's Downey coming back with his Zimmer frame, um, or not, I don't yeah, know. he's getting a bit old to do the part of uh, Tony Stark. Um, but yeah, okay, right. Next up, showcase four in a 9.4 first Silver Age Flash and first mm -hmm. DC comic. Um, yeah, it's the first book of the Silver Age, really, for DC. Yeah, depending on whether you start the Silver Age with this or whether you start it with the start of the Comic Code Authority. Yeah, it's it's kind of a weird thing. So the reason this is considered the first Silver Age um, DC book, and there was books that were with the Comic Code Authority, obviously, before this, uh, is this is when they kind of rewrote the character of um, the Flash and really went back to doing superhero stories again. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that it was kind of a new era in terms of storytelling, in terms of, um, you know, what they the direction that DC was taking. So um, definitely um, it's kind of a weird one where, I mean, they, they say the first Wonder Woman, for example, it, uh, Silver Age is 1958. Yeah. Which is like well after most people say the Silver Age has started. Uh, but it's based on that new direction yeah, and new version of the characters. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, right. I think this sounds extremely cheap. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> for this, 9.4. 9.4. 9 but CBCS ones have a tendency of being a little bit, well, a little uh, like bit. about 20% cheaper than um, CGC. Uh, how about 300,000 cheaper? Really? Oh, so that's FMV. So we don't really have a sales person. Three hundred thousand though, cheaper. That doesn't make sense. Um, um, is there? Well, look, okay. Let's look at the last sale of a high grade one of these, which was an, an eight o. Okay. For ninety six thousand. And uh, this sold for forty eight. A month ago, and this sold for twenty eight. Whoa um okay let's let's nine go back two, to the list nine two was just sold for a quarter of the price of an eight out that does not make sense um can you look at the cbcs uh copies let's see like uh yeah so let's go back to the listing okay is it restored no nope, unrestored Are you sure? What's that say above the 9.4? Well, it says, degree of restoration unrestored. Then it goes on to say, professional restoration includes extensive amount of colour touch and... This is nonsense. Why does it say degree of restoration unrestored? Okay, because I, I saw above the 9.4 on the slab itself, it says restored. It looks like it says restored. So this is the restored copy. Okay, now that makes sense. Okay, so when you have a restored copy you're going to get like, especially if the super, super high grade, you're only going to get like 10 to 20% of the value. Okay. That's what it's explained. So I was slightly put off by the description here. Yeah. Unrestored. 
Yeah, that's really messed up description. I I, I could see people like getting duped by that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this makes sense. Now the world is back to normal again. Uh, <laughs> it makes sense. So I was like, how could this go for so cheap? Um, like, yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. So yeah, what so does a CGC labeling is better because you could tell instantly by looking at a CGC label that it's restored. Whereas yeah. it just looks like a blue label. Yeah, it looks like it's an unrestored yeah, it's copy. It does say restored right on the top left-hand corner. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's why I said I saw that. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay, so the people who need shooting are the people at... Um, uh, Comic Link I mean, that they didn't list it, it properly. Yeah, that's a really messed up listing. Okay, so let's now compare it to um, how much... So it would be 300000 uh, if it was unrestored. So let's go back to restored and let's compare it yeah and we can look at cbcs versions as well because oh, oh it's actually the highest graded unrestored uh, highest graded restored so it actually it's a, it's a it's a reasonable price yeah i mean that's that was five or six years ago so actually it's a pretty decent price it's doubled that price so, I mean, that's why like these restored copies are a real bargain. You know, you're getting a really nice looking copy for three hundred thousand dollars cheaper. You know, um, actually, what would that buy you in a re unrestored copy? So this is like actually nothing. Um, Twenty-seven thousand would buy you a a four yeah buy you a four zero, maybe a four. Now, which would you rather, a uh, 4.0, unrestored, or a restored 9.4? i that restored copy because uh, that's performed better. So it will probably yeah. continue to perform better. Yeah, I just I never understood why they, they, they hit them so hard. I mean, you'd have to look at what the restoration is. Like, it's probably a little bit of color touch and things like yeah. that. But um, it seems awfully, awfully harsh <laughs> on, the, on the grading. Right, um, this be solved. Um, and this one has like 2,000 or not, not even a thousand slabs on the census, like oh, 500, oh, 590. Yeah, yeah, this is a really rare book. I mean, and you know, to get it in a 9 4 for that kind of price, it just seems like it seems well, mind boggling. You to me. 9 4 somewhere, you've got half a million dollars in your pocket. Yeah, I mean, I would rather like that high grade restored personally. Yeah, so would uh, I. I'd, yeah, it's a nice, nice copy. Um, and actually, um, yeah, I don't know. So what do they show CBCS on this? Like, can you see the CBCS restored? Well, I can't imagine there's many of them. Yeah. Uh, we have a comparative sale right there. Yeah, the second sale is a compa comparative. Uh, um, $16,000, so similar. So, yeah, so it's done okay. It's, done it's gone up, actually. Oh, yeah, it's done all right. So this is a new record. So I mean, in a weird way, it kind of shows that restored books, you know, can actually hold value and actually go it up in value. The uniqueness, Alan, because if you know, there's not many of them. Even if, at that grade, there's just two or three. Whereas if you go back and buy an unrestored four or five, there's probably fifty or sixty of them. Yeah. I mean, this is probably a book that during the, when it was found, discovered, it was probably restored is as a way of just making it present better. Yeah. You know, that was a very common practice. I mean, yeah. and it's a, it's a, an important book. So people would do that. Yeah. Um, and they probably, I, I bet at the time when they restored it, they probably spent a lot of money to get it restored to, to that level. Well, I've got, I've got, so I was looking through some, uh, I've got a whole stack of, um, you know, old comic collector magazines, not from, not out, mm -hmm. mid 90s, mid 90s, mm -hmm. and big adverts for professional restoration of comics. Yeah. I remember that too, back in the day. Like, I mean, it was like really common in the 90s. Yeah. Full page like, ads, full page ads, uh, professional restoration, um, you know. Like, I remember, uh, having conversations with like a comic shop owner and he was bragging bragging about that he's got a batman one 
and that he was going to get it professionally restored to make it look like as sharp as he could. Um, and that was like, you know, common, common practice. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? I mean, you know, uh, yeah. it, it was, you, a, you want to protect your investment actually. Yeah. Yeah. There were some professionals out there who were very skilled. At doing and they, these were, these were people that were like museum yeah. quality oh, restorers. Yeah. yeah. So very, you know, very different times. Um, I'm, I'm sort of seeing re restoration as a um, as a spec potential that you you know you can pick up these books three hundred thousand dollars cheaper. That's a pretty good uh, margin. Um, and uh, who knows if if people just even if they just tolerate it a little bit more, you know, instead of cutting it down to ten percent, they say, uh, "Well, I don't, I don't think it's just we've seen it, Alan. We've seen restored." Uh, Great. Kind of holding their own and going That's up, yeah. Or better over the last uh, 12, 24 months than the non-restores. Non yeah, but imagine if, okay, instead of 10% value, if it says, well, they say, hey, let's give it 30% because, you know, it's still professionally yeah. done. Well, that's, you've tripled your money <laughs> just, by, <laughs> just, by, just by that little bit of acceptance. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I think, uh, you know, that that's a real market that I, I've been pitching it for the longest time. I hope that I'm having some influence on the market because I really need that influence. Um, <laughs> but we you never know. Topics. So people in the comments below, tell us, what do you think of res restoration? Would you buy uh, an expensive comic, but restored? Okay. Um, and which would you pick? The Flash uh, 9.4 or the, the Flash at a 4.0? So that'd be the other question I'd both, love to hear. That you and I would go for the restored 9.4 right yes okay well thank you everyone for watching and it's not over this is actually these are the smaller books on this list mark gets all the big ones why does mark always get the big ones well all the big ones are mark's channel I mean, Alan, it's not always a bonus i end up getting the pesky arachnid usually you get the arachnid you love the arachnid you just don't know it yet um it, it's going to be on mark's channel it, you got to go over there see all the big books and they're big. I mean, these are some pretty big sales that happen on this uh, auction. So thanks again for watching. Bye for now.